So I am making a migration from Flash CS4 to Adobe Animate CC 2018. And I used to use something called a VCAM, a virtual camera, to do some more exciting stuff. Uh, I have just learned today that there is a built-in virtual camera, and they're simply calling it the camera tool inside of Adobe Animate. So I'm going to try to make use of that and explain what I've learned about it in the last couple of hours and try to document it in this video. So here it goes. I've got myself an animation and this one right now is pretty straightforward. It's just a motion graphic, little studio introduction, just looks like that. A virtual camera will allow us to, do, to simulate motions of a camera. Zoom, tilt, rotate, and even some tint and some contrast things we can try playing with too. Here's where it gets started. After you've animated your your principal animation, you can turn on the virtual camera or the camera tool I should call it uh, by either clicking this button here or this button right here. I'm going to go with this one. And by the way, if you don't like what's going on with it, you can also trash it just as though it's a layer. It will respond to that. Now, If I go back to the very beginning, you'll see there's a keyframe and the, the camera tool or the camera layer works just the way that the VCAM did. Only the difference is you're using tools or controls down at the bottom rather than manipulating it the way you would if it was a symbol or an instance on the screen. So here's my cam my camera light right now. I've got my animation going. I'm going to scrub ahead. And what I wanted to do, just to start dressing it up a little bit, is when I get to this point here, I wanted to zoom in. So when I get to this point in my camera track, I'm going to hit F6. And I'm going to stick with classic tweens, F6, and another F6. And I'm going to have this second version of it zoom in till it fills the frame. Now this is interesting. I have some uh, masks going on with it, and I can see the masks are cutting it off. And so we'll see what happens when I put the classic tween in between. See if it makes up for that. Oh, yep. So I showed a little bit of a glitch, but it is also zooming in on the mask, and so everything looks just fine. So I've zoomed in just about to the point that I want it. Lovely thing about this, too, is that the tween responds to things like easing and other little tricks that you might have. So if you can find your tweening... Ugh, Somewhere up here I've got some easing. Yeah, there's an ease. So I'd like to have it ease in and ease out just to make it look a little bit less robotic. Save and apply. So I'm going to test this out, see how the animation looks now. Yep, we've seen that before. But now the zoom, nice. Nice way to sort of finish things up. And there's so much more that you can do with it. You could also have a, a bit of a rotate. Now I'll start trashing this thing up by tossing some other effects in here. Let's have it rotate and do a barrel roll. Why would you do that? I don't know. But we're going to do it. Classic tween. And we can go ahead and we can we could use a rotate function here, but it also responds to the properties tweening. And I could say, sure, give me, not an ease, give me a rotate clockwise one. And you can see it right on the stage. It's going to do this. And once again, this also responds to easing. So I could go in here and I could give this thing an ease out. It's nice when it, especially for a rotate. Rotate is a really trashy thing to do, but what the heck. And of course, this is all behaving with keyframes. So if you want to slow it down, you can draw that rotation over a little bit like this. And now the animation looks like this. Why would you want to rotate stuff? I don't know, but you can. And that's this virtual camera. One last thing that may not be really obvious is that there's some properties that are built into this thing that you can mess around with as well. Um, let's see. If we wanted to sort of do a pan on this thing, maybe zoom it in even more. Again, I'm just sort of <laughs> inventing a bunch of really strange effects that we can apply to it, but what the heck. Let's, um, let's have it rotate like this, and then I'm going to almost right away, I'll F6. Let's zoom in some more with the classic tween. And let's um, pan and tilt and stuff like that. So here's how it goes. Let's see. If I wanted to, to, to zoom this thing in, pan and tilt it all at the same time, I can do something like this. I'm going to zoom in on the word studios a little bit more. Of course, it's way too big for the frame right now. But like everything else, you can move objects when you drag in this direction it's kind of like you're aiming the camera over here so i have just edited a zoom and a pan and a tilt to focus on the s f6 okay i got a place to start 
place to end classic tween in between and for this now you normally you'd be taking an element and dragging it but all we want to do is pan it over now this is where you may want to start using the properties to get to make sure it's perfectly horizontal so let's see if I can make this happen I've got it starting there you know what before I even start I'm gonna put in my easing so it's a classier pan right from the start so yeah I could try to drag the camera over but I might be a little awkward and uneasy with this so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna see if I can find the camera properties and make it work I guess I have to select the camera first so if I just click on the camera tool over here oh yeah it brings up the camera properties nice and now I've got the position, I've got the X, I've got the Y, and if I start to increase, oh no, I didn't want that, undo that. It's the X that I want to change. So you can just control this, and holding the shift key down, you can move over pretty quick. So I just altered the X location of the camera, that is the X location of its pan. You can also numerically deal with the zoom. There's lots of other stuff too. You can numerically deal with the rotate. You can even program in tints and adjust colors, all sorts of things just by activating them. And if you ever don't like what you did, if you wanted to snap it back to the default center, you can hit that reset and it will pop it back to where its origin, origin would be. But at this point in time, whoops, you know what? I did that so wrong. I did the pan control when I was right in the middle of the tween. Never do that. Shift F6. Smarter people would have spotted that. I should have gone to the end location first. Then I click on the camera. Then I see the camera properties. And because I'm in the ending keyframe, yeah, that's the place where I wanted to do this. Something like that. And I hope my easing's still in place. So now my animation is just full of tweens and camera moves. Zoom, spin, and a pan, and a tilt. Lovely. doesn't ease out very well. wonder why that is. I'm going to check my easing again. So if you click on the tween, there's my tweening. I've got way too many palettes open, so it's a little hard to see. But easing custom. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not what I wanted. So, ladies and gentlemen, you get the idea. It's uh, great fun. Very powerful tool. It replaces the VCAM that we used to use for these things. But I think it does it a whole lot better. Um, and... It should be a little bit simpler to use. So try it for yourselves, see what you can do, and good luck vcamming or cameraing in, in, in Adobe Animate. That's it.